One of the biggest challenges home gardeners face is controlling pesky insects. So while you may be looking forward to eating your fruits and vegetables when they're ready, you are certainly not the only one. Many types of insects are looking forward to eating them too. There are many common pests that invade our gardens, such as sucking insects, which suck the fruit as they grow, or suck the sap from the stems and leaves. Other types bore holes in the leaves. There are also slugs and snails, nematodes which live in the soil and attack the roots of the plants, and some birds which become nuisances when vegetables get to a mature stage. By preparing the land prior to sowing and spacing your plants so that they are not crowded or shaded, pests won't have the conditions or environment they need to take hold. You may consider Integrated Pest Management IPM, as an approach to gardening. This method incorporates the use of current comprehensive information on the life cycles of pests and their interaction with the environment. This information, in combination with available pest control methods, is used to manage pest damage by the most economical means and with the least possible hazard to people, property and the environment. Another key element of IPM is learning to know your insect friends. There are three types of insects that are beneficial to home gardeners. Parasitoids, which search for pests and lay eggs on or inside them. Predators, which catch and eat pests and their eggs. And pathogens, which are bacteria that cause pests to become sick. So, if you see wasps, ladybugs and spiders in your garden, don't fret, be glad. They are on your side. They are the good guys. And there are certain plants that keep those pesky pests away. The smell of chives and escalion, for instance, is unpleasant for many insects. So by planting these flowers in between your other crops, you can repel those pests. There's so much that's done to ensure our gardens are pest free, but sometimes these pests find access points. Master Gardener Rashida Linton will be showing us how to make homemade remedies to combat pests. All right, how does it go now? You know, carry on. Yeah. For persons who have a little garden at home, mm -hmm. instead of going out to purchase those chemicals, you can actually make your own. Okay. What you need, you need garlic, mm -hmm. onion, pepper, liquid soap, neem leaves, and water along with your strainer and, and containers. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're going to do, you're going to allow, you're going to chop all the items, the That's onions, the garlic. Mm -hmm. the garlic, the pepper. Okay. Chop them finely or blend it in okay. your blender. You're going to add one tablespoon of liquid soap to that amount. Mm -hmm. Pour a little water and allow it to seep overnight. Okay. That is all. Then you're going to add this mixture mm -hmm. to one gallon of water to spray your plants. But remember, only soft bodied insects such as aphids, white flies, or snow scales you should use the homemade pesticides for. Okay. When you're spraying, ensure to spray the underside as well as the top side of the leaf. So this is just one homemade remedy. Okay. A second one, just simple soap water. What you need to do, you can also add one tablespoon of liquid soap to a gallon of water. Okay. Shake it, put it in your spray bottle and spray your plants. Okay. Or after washing the same wash soap, as long as there's no bleach in the soap, uh -huh. you can use it to pour onto your plants. So it's very simple. Next, what we can do, these are called neem. 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 N-E-E-M. Neem. neem. Okay. So you're going to take the neem leaves, mm -hmm. pour it into your container, add water a little again. water. Okay. Allow this to seep overnight. Okay. Then, you're going to use your strainer, mm -hmm. strain it into your container, then add that mixture 
to a gallon of water and spray your plants as well. Okay, simple, simple stuff. They're very simple. Uh, Master Gardener Linton, is, is there a particular time that you actually spray the plants though? Yes, since it's organic, yeah. we prefer you to spray early in the morning when the wind is relatively low. Okay, early morning. Early. All right, simple stuff. There are a few other pest control tips and homemade things you can use. Ashes which can be sprinkled onto the soil to deter slugs and snails. Eggshells which when crushed and circled around your plant deter slugs and snails from feasting. These slimy creatures don't like to cross over the sharpness of crushed eggshells. If you don't want to save up all your eggshells, there's another alternative, bear. <laughs> yes, bear. Apparently, snails love the sweet, sour, and yeasty smell of bear. All you need is a large plastic bottle about 12 inches high. Cut the container in two, about a quarter inch from the top, so that the container is at least 8 inches deep. Dig a hole in the center of your raised bed and set in the container so that the sides are level with the top of the soil. Then, fill the container halfway with bear and leave it. The slugs and snail will be drawn to the bear, drop in, and they won't be able to climb out. They'll drown, but at least they'll drown happy. By being pest-wise, you'll soon have a lush garden with fruits and vegetables ready for you to pick and eat. But you must remember to pick them at the right time, because if they stay too long, they'll decay. And if you pick them when they're too young, their post-harvest life will be limited. Excess moisture will cause your crop to decay, so avoid reaping when there is heavy dew and in the rain. If you wash them to get rid of any soil, make sure you dry them thoroughly before putting them away. Refrigeration will help vegetables to last longer as well, but some fruits and vegetables like tomatoes should not be refrigerated. Most root crops like garlic can last for some time outside of the refrigerator. Avoid putting any of your fruits and veggies in plastic bags in the fridge. They need to stay as ventilated as possible. The best way to maximize the quality and nutrition of the vegetables you grow is to cook and eat them as soon as possible after picking. Food is of utmost importance because it provides the body with nutrients. These nutrients are necessary because they help with the repair, growth, maintenance and development of our bodies. So you see, having a backyard garden is a sure way of ensuring you eat properly grown food, save money, and reduce food wastage. Backyard living, not bad at all.